so now we've got a basic structure, a pattern we can work with. We can make simple statements and questions using this structure, and all we need now is words to fit into the structure. So that... I'll leave you to find the words you need and make your own example sentences. But before you start, let me go over it all in detail. All right. Here's a simple sentence. The cat climbs the tree. And then we introduce the auxiliary do that sets off a rule that says The inflection on the main verb gets taken away and put onto the auxiliary. Yes, that's right. You've got it. Well done. So climbs becomes climb and do becomes does. That's right. Very good. The main verb goes into its base form and the inflection goes on to the auxiliary. That gives the sentence emphasis. The cat does climb the tree. We could use that if, for example, someone thinks the cat doesn't climb the tree and we want to disagree. To make the sentence negative, we just add not to the auxiliary. The cat does not or in conversation, doesn't climb the tree. And to ask a question, we move the auxiliary to the beginning. Does the cat climb the tree? OK, now we learned that the means a particular one. So if we know which cat it is, we'll say the cat. But if it's any cat, we can say a cat. So we get a cat does climb the tree for emphasis. A cat doesn't climb the tree in the negative. And does a cat climb the tree for the question? And of course, we can change it from the tree, that is one particular tree, to a tree, any tree. So we can have a cat does climb a tree, a cat doesn't climb a tree, and does a cat climb a tree? I like the and a, uh, don't you? Well, sometimes, but I still get very confused about it all. Yes, I think it's one of those things we need to practice a lot before we really understand it. We also learn that we can make the noun plural, so cat can become cats. More than one cat. When we do that, the verb changes. It doesn't need an S on the end anymore. So when we bring in the auxiliary do, we don't need to add the inflection on the main verb because there is no inflection. We can leave do as it is and show emphasis by saying The cats do climb the tree. That's right. And the negative form would be... The cats don't climb the tree. Good! And the question... Do the cats climb the tree? Exactly! And if we want to talk about cats in general, we can take out the and just say cats climb the tree. So we get cats do climb the tree for emphasis, and cats don't climb the tree for negative, and do cats climb the tree for the question. So that would be cats in general climbing one particular tree. Yes, any cats, but just one particular tree. And could they climb more than one tree? Of course, then it would be cats do climb the trees, cats don't climb the trees, and do cats climb the trees? But they would still be a particular group of trees, wouldn't they? Like the trees in someone's garden or something. Suppose it was trees in general. Well, you'd do the same as you did for cats and take out the. So we'd say cats climb trees, which would become. Cats do climb trees, for emphasis. Cats don't climb trees, in the negative. And do cats climb trees, would be the question. 
Is that right? Yes, yes, that's right. That's perfectly right. And that would be cats in general, climbing trees in general. Yes, yes, you've got it. You've understood it perfectly. Now go away and practice it. Make your own sentences about whatever you like. But remember, transformational grammar is only good at telling you how to make sentences. It can't really tell you how to use them or when to use them. So you also have to read in English and listen to people speaking English to see how they use these structures. All right. All right. Can you recommend a book for us? Oh, uh, anything you like. How about Harry Potter? Yes, yes, that's fine. Now I have to run. You do your homework and let me know how you get on. Goodbye, Goodbye. for now. Goodbye. Goodbye.